What's going on, people? And welcome to Man Knows Football. You are here with Goonie and Apple. Happy Manchester United fan. Although well, he's got a bit of a scowl in his face. I'll let you decide whether you want to talk about it or not. I won't be the man to put it on camera. But before we get into it, make sure you like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. We're coming up closer every single day to 2,000 subs. So thank you, guys. Let's keep it up. Let's keep it going. But Apple... How are you doing today, my guy? You don't look too happy. <laughs> yeah, it's been one of those days, isn't it? It's been one of those days. We'll leave it at that. Hey, listen, it's a it's a football thing. And to be honest with you, I won't go into it, but I've, I understand. I understand. I understand. I shouldn't be laughing. Goonie's being a prick right now. But <laughs> to more happy news for you anyway, I could care less. Manchester United 4, Newcastle 1. I forgot for a second who you played. Because because the man who stole the headlines, obviously Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah, Ronaldo two goals. FC. There you go. Do you know what? Instead of me just waffling on, I'm just going to let you talk about it because you're going to make it sound so much better with your professionalism <laughs> and obviously your joy of getting three points at the return of the man to Old Trafford. So let's go, Apple. Uh, listen, I, I think we, we, we had a really good conversation the other day, me, you and Rodri, and I think we spoke about the potential of what could have happened in that fixture. And I know Rodri was being really uh, humble with his one prediction. Um, but I did see us putting put in, put in four past Newcastle. I, said, I think I said 4-0 um, defensively poor uh, at times again from United. I think there was a 20-minute period where it was a bit end-to-end. -end. Um, but full credit to Newcastle. I think they... For me, I think it's. I think I think the word is out where Oli's going to struggle with this United team, which is setting them up to be so rigid. Um, so you know, I think teams know if they if they put themselves in, in into two banks, go to a middle or a low block, that you know they'll probably stifle United because Oli doesn't want the creative players to play uh, with too much incision uh, or, 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 or try to play too many incisive passes. The only player that does that really is Bruno and Pogba. Uh, but Bruno tends to give the ball away a lot. But if we analyse the game from start to finish, I think United looked really, really dominant early on. Ronaldo's movement was was just astonishing. Um, I think the way that all the United fans remembered Ronaldo when he left was to be so tricky, isolating players 1v1, 1v2, and just absolutely embarrassing people. Um, and even then, he was able to pop up in the middle of the pitch and, and do some really tr uh, tremendous things. But the player that he's become, and the thing is, it's obvious for the guys that watch him, or that has watched him week in week out since he left to Real Madrid and and Juventus. You know, we've seen how dangerous he can be of his movement. But now, for everybody else to see it, is it, it you know, and and obviously for us to see it even more uh, now is 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 really just astonishing. It really is something. And I think for guys like Mason Greenwood, uh, I'll be honest, uh, Rashford, and even Cavani, uh, I think it even teach Cavani a thing or two about movement and timing. Because Ronaldo just, his mindset and mentality really underpins the way that he plays. Um, I don't think he actually had a phenomenal game. I don't think he'd done anything that was magnificent. But his movement for the whole game that he was on, my God, it was he, he just put on a striker's clinic. It really was a clinic of, of where to be and how to move and how to touch the ball. Um I and in many ways, I think it complemented uh, United really because, or flattered United because there were times when they just were so poor and were so basic. And I think Jaden Sancho really struggled, and I think maybe he might be having a bit of a bit of a mare at the moment. Uh, I'm not, I'm not overly worried about that. But... I, d I don't think he was terrible, though. To be fair on him, I don't think he had a horrible game. I just don't think he stood out. Well, I, it's one of those things where when you're Jaden Sancho. Uh, you can have a target on your back anyway with the British media for obvious reasons. Um, but also, I think it's not so much that he had a bad game, it's not so much the things that he done with the ball, it's more what he done without the ball. Um, his off-ball movements and, and maybe he could have made more supporting runs, maybe mm. he could have even made a few more runs in behind and he didn't really do that. Um, but something tells me that's not really on him and it's perhaps maybe a little bit more on Oli not wanting to overcommit, especially when we know Matic is there um, uh, with, with Pogba and, uh, and Fernandez. It's a three-man midfield where you've got two guys that aren't the greatest defensively, having to do a lot of legwork for someone who is still a good defensive midfielder, let's not get it wrong, um, but obviously can't cover as much ground. So perhaps that played a big part in it. Um, 
I mean, and, and obviously Sancho not being the quickest uh, of wide men. Now, it doesn't. I'm not saying he's slow. He's no slouch, but yeah, yeah. He's not. He's not known for his up and down runs. He's not known. Yeah, for he's his not. Running. He's not the Mbappe's and Mane's in that nah, speed. Yeah, nah, yeah. Nah, Which is it's, it's so fine. It's fine because he's got other uh, tricks under his book that he's fantastic at. So yeah, but sorry, go on. So you know, I, I think I think there were there, there were there were moments there where I think. I think we looked tactically inept, and I and I think we're going to look like that for for a while. Um, maybe even as long as Oli Van Solskjaer is the manager, I think United will always look like a team that are only missing a philosophy. Because now <laughs> we shouldn't have to sign a thirty-six year old striker to look complete. Um, still missing a defensive midfielder. But with that said, the fear that comes with having that number seven up front. Yeah, I mean, you can see that Newcastle back line. They, they were, I mean, in the first 10 minutes, they were mindful of the pacing behind. They yeah. knew even at his age, he could still leave them all for dead. You had, uh, was it was it Lascelles that was looking to make cover and runs instantly in the first five, six minutes. Ronaldo was looking for spaces to run in and straight away, you could see the centre-halves were working, trying to back each other. And I thought that was good. But we always knew it was only going to be a matter of time until, yeah. until the man himself popped up and, and got on the score sheet. It just so happens that it, it kind of came off the back of a, a goalkeeper error, a, a goalkeeper mistake. Um, but again, you, you've got to be in those positions. You, you yeah, I of, wanted to. I wanted to say that. Yeah. Apple. I wanted to because I was going to actually um, talk about the first goal that we touched on that a little bit because yeah. there was a few things that you said um, in terms of um, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer as well, lack of tactics. And what I wanted to say with the first goal was that was a bit of individual brilliance and individualism from Mason Greenwood to take the initiative to obviously to, to draw the shot in, which obviously led to the fumble. But going back to what you was just saying right now, right? People are looking at that as, oh, it's a tapping. But to understand and to sniff the danger is a different type of skill. Oh, understand yeah. and what i respect so much about ronaldo is because you've got to understand i've followed him out throughout his whole career i'm from that era from when he started at united to where he is now so i've seen the transition from him being that tricky winger to now move into more of a central position to adapt to that the way he has and to sniff out danger like he's been playing that number nine position mm -hmm. for all his career it just goes to show how special the man is yeah. And then not to mention the second goal, which I'll let you come on to, but that <laughs> one there, that first goal was just Van Nistelrooy. Van yeah. Nistelrooy, instinctive. That's where the danger is going to be if the ball comes out and I'm going to be on it in a flash. And he did exactly that. You know, I'll, I'll be really honest with you. Um, before we move on to the second goal, I'm watching Ronaldo's movement. And I think just that one goal, that first goal, he reminds me of, of, of Inzaghi. Um you know those real world class box strikers. You just you the check in like, is perfect, oh, the in and out. Yeah, right. and you know you almost play against those guys and go, I don't see what the fuss is about until he pops up and scores a hat trick, and you go, has he scored a hat trick against me? And then you look at the details, and he, they just get the details, everything right. They're not just looking at the ball; they're looking at you. They're seeing where you know when are you turning your head. The second they can see the number in your shirt, that's it. They're off. Yeah. And then you, you know, and you look back, and they're gone. Then you look again, balls in the back of the net, and you go fuck. And it, all kinds of finishes, left foot, right foot, great strikes, tappings, you name it. And uh, just Ronaldo for him to develop that skill, because let's face it, it it's it's a natural instinct to have. Oh, 100%. Um, we talk about those kinds of strikers like Crespo and Inzaghi, those great strikers in and around the box. The best of them all, you have to say now is Ronaldo for sure. No, definitely. And then let's move on to the second goal because this just mm -hmm. goes to show, like, we weren't really expecting, it's like you said, we weren't expecting him to see him pick up the ball and just burn through and score. And that's exactly what he did on the second. I, it was, I, I hate to say this as a Chelsea fan, I really do, but as a football fan, it kind of felt like it was rolling the clock back a bit. The way he just took that ball on that left wing and just drove forward. You know, the second... His, his boots crossed that chalk into that box. It was over. And yeah, it was just, the yeah. way he'd done it, bro. It was the way he'd done it. Absolutely just slapped it underneath the goalkeeper. That was it. That was all what, she wrote. What, 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 what it was for me is that it's a man that's done that a thousand times in training. And we've watched him do it so many times at the highest level, Champions League. Uh, do you know what? I'm, I'm no longer going to talk about his age because it's irrelevant. 
for me. It's completely irrelevant. The guy is just, he's a phenomenon. Uh, he's a so machine, we're not gonna talk yeah. About, <laughs> we're not going to talk about his efficiency. When he picked that ball up, the first thing I thought was, they could be in a bit of trouble here. They could be in a bit of trouble here. And he started to run, and just the speed is running at. They were always playing catch-up. And I, I think as a defender, when you're in that position, you're thinking to yourself, right, keep him on his weak side, keep him on his weak side. It's Cristiano Ronaldo. He doesn't have a weak side. <laughs> That's you what know? I was going to say, yeah. So, so they, they kind of done everything that he could in the sense of, right, keep him there, keep him there, keep him running away from the goal. Oh, shit, right, he's too quick. I can't make him run away. Don't let him, don't let him cut in. He can't get any more, any more central. So you talk about these, these pitch markings, that, that sort of bit of pitch geography that help defenders out, that help players out. You say, right, well, look, he's, he's, he's over the, he's outside the central area of the goal. He's outside the golden zone. You know, he's not, in between uh, the markers of the D on the edge of the box, he's well outside of that. And he's saying to himself, right, I should be safe now. Maybe I could take my foot off the pedal. And then he just goes, well, left foot. And it's the way he does it. I, I, if you if you actually watch the replay, he gets his head up, looks down, gets his head up. And it's the next time he gets his head up and he looks at the goalkeeper, he's waiting for him to make a move. And he just waits for him to step. And as he steps, he hits it really early, really flush, straight for his legs. And it was not a mistake. That was a world class finish, yeah. And I know. It was not a yeah, I know exactly what I was looking at when he scored that goal. Trust me. Oh, it's just ridiculous. I, I think I, I, I know I've heard a couple of people say about poor goalkeeping in the second goal. You could maybe say it on the first, but let, let's get let's get this straight. Being a goalkeeper, it's the only specialist position on the pitch. It's the hardest position on the pitch to play, and you've got to have something a little bit wrong with you if you actually want to play there. But you know, for for all, for all the, the things that we can say, a goalkeeper should and shouldn't be doing. Saving that is not one of the ones that you could say you should be doing. Uh, you've got the greatest finisher of all time bearing down on, on the goal. He's looking at the goalkeeper for the weakness or waiting for, for, for just a chink in his chain. As the keeper takes a step, it's just, it's just one step that he takes and he pulls the trigger. In fact, he pulls the trigger just before the step because he's anticipating the step. And you watch him do it. You actually watch him do it. And I don't expect some of the guys that are watching, even some of the pundits that are watching it, I don't expect them to really get it truly because perhaps they don't have the maybe the, some of the, the same football education as others do, but you watch him do it. He's done it a thousand times as he knows exactly what he's doing. He's anticipating what the goalkeeper's about to do. Then he pulls the trigger just as he's about to do it. And there's nothing the goalkeeper can do. And, and at that point, 2-1 to United... I'll be honest, they never looked like conceded again after that, if, if, we're, if, we're, if we're honest. They looked in, in cruise control then. Um, Ronaldo stole all the headlines, and, and I'll be honest, rightfully so. Yeah, and and at that point, I just knew like the United way was they're going to want more. And then his Portuguese um, fellow teammate, Bruno, Bruno Fernandes, with a quality, quality finish. What a finish that was. And it's typical. We're just getting used to it from Bruno now. He yeah, picks up. Yeah. He picks up the ball outside the box. You give him a, a sniff of danger. You're in trouble. Well, what's interesting with that one is that he, he, he didn't just smash it. He didn't just look up and hit it. Um, mm -hmm. He looked up and picked a spot. He, he stroked the ball and with, with with real control. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that again for me is a world class finish. And that's Bruno Fernandez doing Bruno Fernandez things, just popping up and just scoring goals and and just I, I think. You talk about the weaknesses that he has in his game. I do think the strengths outweigh them. Um, definitely, wildly outweigh them. Because when he gives the ball away, they're not always guaranteed to concede goals, unlike Fred, because they play in two different areas of the pitch. Yeah. Um, but, my God, can he finish? I think he's one of the best finishers in Europe. He's a better finisher than most strikers have seen. Yeah, yeah, sure. he's he's definitely he's a lethal finisher for for a midfielder. Yeah. But I, I know a bit of history that he actually started as a striker, so that, absolutely, that's that's absolutely. that's why his technique is so good. Yeah. Um, but you know, do you know what the the fourth goal? I want to talk about that because there's somebody that was involved in that who I felt so bad for because I was watching his body language when he came on the field. That was Donny yeah. van der Beek. Donny van der Beek. He wanted it so, so badly and I wanted him to get the goal as well. Like, I feel some sympathy for the man, but like, you see when Lin um, Jesse scored that? Yeah. Good finish, by the way. Very good finish as well. Yeah. Not taking it away from... I looked at I, I looked at van der Beek and he was like, fuck, you can see it. He's yeah. like, I needed that shit, man. But it, it goes to show, like, because a, a player that's in that situation, a lot of the time, players down tools. They don't give a yeah. shit. They're just trying to get out and go to whatever club that's going to allow them to play football. Yeah, absolutely. 
but you could still see you could still see the disappointment. You see what I'm saying? And I felt that that was a good sign. And Donny feels like he's got a lot to give for Manchester United. So I think that was a good sign. But before we continue, we've had an old school WWE style wrestling intervention. Yeah. You've you've missed about 15 minutes of I'm homage to you. Cristiano <laughs> Ronaldo. <laughs> I'm going to put my food in the microwave because she's saying I might take a minute. Yeah? Yeah? I'll warm it up later. In a second. Yeah? All right, then. Let's go. Let's go. Let's talk. Let's talk. What are we talking about? We were, yeah, we just got. We were just gonna get onto the <laughs> to the fourth goal. Uh, I was just talking about Donny Van de Beek. Um, I asked him about his thoughts on on Donny Van de Beek and how how he felt about not getting that goal, the fourth goal. You know, so I, think, I think for, for Donny, I, I, I could see I could see the frustration because he was screaming for the ball. Um, but it's a great look. It's, it's a really good. And I'll I'll be honest, not coach. That was an off the cuff. Move by good players. That was good players doing good things. Pogba starts off the move. Obviously, Lingard gets the finish. Um, the way what I'm really impressed with with the, with the finish is the way Lingard uses Martial to sell the dummy. And to be honest, he probably could have still played the ball in for Martial. Um, but it's just the way that he, he kind of used Martial that manipulated the cells. Everyone shifted over to the right hand side, which opened up the space room on the left. He's turned out onto his right foot and just bent it. And it's a really, really good finish. Let's be honest, Lingard, we know he's a good finisher. Um, I'm not going to say as good as Fernandez, but we know he's a top-tier finisher. So when he gets a chance, we know he's going to put the ball in the back of the net. Um, I'm really happy. I'll be honest, I'm happier for Jesse Lingard than I am for Donny van der Beek. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately for van der Beek, he's come to the club at a time where they didn't need a player like him. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially when someone like Pogba is fit and Fernandez is fit, he's not going to get a sniff. Um, you're better off just having one of the younger lads there that's, that's kind of ready to, to, to step in. But I guess it's about strength and depth. Um, but Donny's going to have to buy this time. And uh, and really for someone like Jesse Lingard in terms of his confidence and just getting him back to playing, I think it's a good thing for him. Do you, do you see Jesse Lingard with a future at Manchester United or do you see him being sold? Because to be fair on him, when he was at West Ham, we all know he did a fantastic job there. And I think he's got a lot to offer for another club. And I think it's a situation of quality and circumstance for him at Manchester United because we know the type of players that you're looking for. It's going to always be like world beaters first before, you know, but that's the way it should be. You're always going to try and look for the best. You want to win the best. So that's well, no yeah. knock on him. Well, look, if you play for Manchester United Football Club, you have to expect a, a, to, to have your your jaw tested at some point or, or, or certainly have your resolve tested. I mean, that's happened Absolutely. To Jesse, Jesse over the last two seasons. He's gone out on loan. I think he obviously, he obviously done really well. He's an impact loan signing for West Ham. Is he ever going to be a starting player for Man United? Look, listen, I've seen weirder things happen. I've seen Fred sign for Man United and start week in, week out. So there's no, <laughs> there's, 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 there's no reason Jesse Lillard can't as well. Look, and I, and, and look listen, I, I'm not trying to be too harsh on Fred because... He's still a professional footballer. I have to respect him to a certain degree, but he's not Manchester United calibre. Sunderland is an attacking midfielder. He can't pass the ball. Um, but then we've got guys like Jesse Lingard who, 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 who bleed for the shirt. He would he bleed for the badge. It actually means something for him to be there. So I wouldn't sell Jesse Lingard if I'm honest. I think he's got an awful lot to offer Manchester United. Um, it's, it's, well, in any one of the positions going forwards, uh, whether it be off the left, off the right, through the centre. Uh, and I think, that, look, listen, we know why he struggled. He's had a lot of off the, off pitch problems, um, but he's never been a bad player um, at all. So I, I hope Jesse gets a, gets a good shout. The only problem for Jesse Lingard is that we've just signed Sancho, Mason Greenwood's always going to play now. Uh, Ronaldo's there, Cavani, Martial. If Martial stays, he's got no chance. If Martial goes, he might get half a chance. Um, but it's just where where do you fit him in, and at what point? I'm just, yeah, no, that's that. That's what I mean. Um, but obviously, emphatic 4 1 win there for Manchester United. We're going to wrap it up before, obviously, I know Roma's got a few things to say about Manchester United, but we're going to wrap up the uh, the, the preview first. Um, man of the match for you, or am I stating the obvious here? Listen, I'm gonna go for Ronaldo. Um, I, I just think it, it, it's not what you've done on the ball, it's what you've done off the ball for 90 minutes. He was just, like I said, he put on a clinic. 
of how to terrify defenses. <laughs> his movement was just horrid, horrid for centre backs, or well, even for the full backs at times. I mean, he's peeling off. He was going to the blind side of the centre half in between the full back and the centre back. <laughs> then he's going between the centre halves. He's running across. He's checking and going blind side. He's just, he's just it, it, it. Like I said, it was a clip for me. Definite man of the match. Before, sealed it off with two goals. So there you go. Ronaldo's the man in that one. There you go. I have to. I have to agree. I'm going to give Ronaldo his man of the match. Got his two on his homecoming special occasion for him, and I saw how early in the match that he wanted it as well. So I was happy for him that he got that. But now it's time for the banter hours. Roma is here, and I am sure I've got a question to ask you, Rome's. What are you saying after that Man United performance? Are you even concerned? What? <laughs> I'm like a shit, blood. I'm like a shit. That was terrible. The only thing I'll say is, well done, Ronaldo. You showed us that you can come to the Premier, you're going to get some goals, in it. What everyone was saying that they weren't too sure about, you showed us you're going to come here and get some goals. Them are like shit, blood. Do you know how many chances Newcastle had? At OT. Them are like shit, blood. This, oh, what? Do you know how many chances, man? These <clears throat> men, these men live in the now. They live in the now. Man United haven't played a team that finished above Arsenal last season. We're four games in. Watch when it starts getting heated, blood. They're hey. pissed. They're pissed. I know already. They are pissed. Ronaldo's gonna help. Ronaldo's gonna save them a little. Greenwood's gonna save them a little. But on a whole on the whole, they're pissed. They are pissed. They are finished. Tottenham a team like a team like Tottenham that lost to think 3-0 will walk over United. Because Listen, their midfield I can... is a bag of shit, blood. Listen, their midfield I can, is a bag of I can shit. Taste the insecurity. And Bruno in the midfield. I can taste no the one is there defending you. apart from Matic. No one. Did you see how many chances? <laughs> Bro, did you... Wait, hold on. Did you why see you mad? Why are you, why you mad? Why are you mad? I just need to know why you're mad. I just need to know why you're upset. I'm not mad, brother. Why are you saying? You see my team. I love so why you, brother. Do you know what I'm saying? Did you see Newcastle? So good, you don't need to be so emotionally invested one second, in my one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. Did you see Newcastle's goal? Oh boy. Did you see their goal? I did. Did you see what Man done? Man took a touch and he spanned both the centre mids, blood. One touch spanned both of them. <laughs> one touch, you know, spanned both of them. That shit. That shit. Oh, oh, man. <coughs> the, the, the chance of um, what's his name? The Arsenal young G. Oh yeah, uh, Willock, 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 Willock. The ball. What are you doing? All they had to do, listen, see if that man did the fever thing and squared the ball. They beat me at Man United. Man United are shit, fam. They are Whoa. shit, bro. They are shit, bro. This is real life as well. I'm not even trying to do the, oh, I'm hating thing and all of that, bro. These That's men all it are not like good enough. Me. They're not good enough. If they think, yeah, scoring, outscoring teams is what's going to make them win the league, they got a rude awakening coming. Listen, Real Madrid done it for five Arsenal years. Yet. You haven't played a team that hey, finished hey, above Arsenal hey. yet. Watch hey. when the Everton's hey. the first thing hey. that you played that was a bit of a challenge. Hey. Who should have smoked you? Hey. Southampton should have smoked you. Hey, like, what are you doing? Are you okay? We've had numerous opportunities. Hey. You men are done. We I don't need concede. To know if you're okay. We don't concede. You men are not levels. You're not levels. Hey. I don't care hey. about you. Know, if we're gonna Roma. talk about a team, I need to know if you're okay. You haven't <laughs> breathed for about, about three minutes. <laughs> Roma went in. <laughs> Roma went in. Screaming, shouting, and screaming about my club. Okay. So if I you don't care, like, well, why, are you, why are you mad? Why you mad? I am not yeah. mad. I'm okay. just saying, bring okay. me my league. Okay. I, I don't want to wait another thirty-four games. Bring me my league. What are you gonna have? Bring me my league. <laughs> I don't want to wait another thirty-four games. Bring what me my league. What are you gonna have? Come on, bro. Bring me my mm -hmm. league. Man City eight levels. Tottenham eight levels. Manchester United eight levels. It's just only know, people I think that can give us a challenge this season. Honestly, just know. And I'm even then, we gave them a chance. We gave them a chance lose. to go past us, and they bottled it. And we had ten men, and they should even have lost that game. We were all keep over the there, bro. There's no team that I need no you to keep this energy that I feel that can come to the bridge. I and win need you to like. keep this energy and get a trip. But this energy is here, bro. Bring me my league. This energy is here. And notice this. See this video here. When the season's done, I'm gonna bring up this video again. Me saying, bring me my lead. I don't want to wait 34 games. Who are we got? Well, you're going to have to. Three points. Man City, Ooh. three points. Man United, three points. Who else Apple. is a challenge? Apple. Who else is a challenge? Big A. Hey, big A. Kovacic, Jorginho are going to run rings around your midfield. Your midfield's not levels. You can, you might score goals. Your midfield is not levels at all. 
Attacking wise, yes. Defending wise, shambles. Shambles. Absolute shambles. You have to do absolute <laughs> shambles. You understand? <laughs> he couldn't do it. And, and my man, going forward, they're, they're bad boys. I'm not going to lie. But try told him to, to chase Kovacic and Kante going the other way. It's a nightmare, bro. It's a hey, nightmare. Hey, before it's he... gonna be a nightmare, bro. And the only reason Villa even had a chance of winning yesterday is because we made six changes plus Saul a debut. That's how much of a bad boy Tuchel is. That's how much of a bad boy he is. You'll let Saul start, you'll let him see what's going on. He fucks up the base, you're coming up at hard time. Till Junior showed him wild one. Show him how it's done. When Till Junior came on, it was a different game, blood. Allow me, man. Man's watching football. Man's not here to argue and banter, bro. This is real life. Man United ain't showing me nothing. Yes, you're going to beat the Leeds. You're going to beat the, the Newcastles. But when it comes to Tottenham, Everton, Southampton, them teams, you're going to crumble. You're going to crumble, bro. You're going to crumble. It's guaranteed. Their first big test here, because remember, we played Arsenal. Even though Arsenal are media, we played it. They're a big test, bro. Last mm -hmm. year, Arsenal took four points off us. Facts. They took four points off United as well last year. You understand? So we can't even knock that. So Arsenal are a challenge. We played Arsenal, we played Liverpool, and now we played Austin Villa, bro, that finished, what, fifth last season, yeah? Fifth or sixth last season. With Danny Ings, with Leon Bailey. That's what I'm saying. Arsenal, Man United ain't had these challenges yet, bro. Watch when they get a better team. It's going to be peak, and the men are going to realise what I'm saying, fam. Wolves should have beat them. Southampton should have beat them, fam. Newcastle had too many chances. Joe Linton. They had Joe Linton moving like flipping name up. <coughs> All right, you know, I had to come back here because I thought, hold on, I'm not going to get run out of the team. First <laughs> off, first off, the drug use is crazy because it's making you say things that only a crazy person will say. Secondly, That's it. Man, they to blame it on the line. You're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait your 34 games, mate. You're going to have to wait your 34 games. Listen, I... I Agree that Chelsea looks strong, but not as strong as that spliff that you're smoking, mate. Let me tell you now, the season is long, and your squad, your squad is not deep enough to compete like Whoa. cities. This guy's on crack. Whoa. Whoa. Hey, Apple, 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 Apple. Are you sure you don't burn, bro? Are you sure you don't burn? I got a Cali for you now. I got a Cali. I listen. know this guy burns, blood. He burns, listen. Blood. Hey, nah, listen. that's why right. even Apple, even, even I was like, like, nah, 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 nah. nah. You want to talk about you're depth, then you're wrong, bro. Money. The only place hey, we hey, don't Apple, have depth. You know we made six changes last, yes, last that match. Yeah. Well done. Well, well done. Who did you play? Who did you play? Mason Mark did you play? Who did you play? Villa. Who were you playing against? Villa. That's the Villa that finished six. Who did you play? Newcastle. <laughs> All right, then. See what I'm saying? They're not bringing that argument to me. They're not bringing that argument to me. Listen, hey. I'm ready to play you, man. We got you, man. Don't worry. We got the only you. thing that's got you game. guys in a good we position this season, you better pray Lukaku stays fit. You better pray he doesn't find the same Krispy Kreme donut place that you found when he was at Man United. Because I'll tell you hey. now, if he does, you know, season are over. is over. Well, Warner ain't finishing his dinner, so we're, we're need to worry about nothing. You see, see him, yeah? You see Apple? You see, this is what they say, bro. You better pray that Lukaku stays fit. Last season, it was, oh, you better pray that Werner starts scoring. You understand? Now it's, you lot better pray that And you didn't win the league. Bro, but you won the Champions League, But you didn't win the league. We didn't win the Lampard. Cool. You didn't win the league. So, listen, this season, you're going to have a lot more of a challenge. I think all the teams around you have improved. Bar City, I don't think City have improved. United have improved. team has improved, fam? Listen. It, it, Man, United it, have. Man United have. We've got to say... Well, let me tell you something about Man United. They've they they improved. If you're not in the, best in the, in the defensive midfielder, if you're not in the... If, if you're not in the best, wise. I'll tell you if you're that not invest in the defensive midfielder in January, I think Chelsea might have to be looking looking forward because I think by that point, United might be out of sight. And that's what hey, I know. That's tough budget, talk. Budget, that's what that's, I know. That, that, that's that's tough talk. That's what I know. The budget about it is and you, loud. And do you because trust? And do you trust this? Man United are going to be out of sight, yeah. And they should have lost <coughs> the ball. Lost to Southampton, yeah. They've conceded like four goals already, bro. You do not think you're going to be out of sight? You lot are brazen. I let you know for free. With with Oli as well. When the first challenge comes. With Oli as well. I know you don't. I know you don't believe that apple. Not with Oli. Not with Oli in charge. <coughs> of course not. He, he doesn't believe that with his chest. 
No, I don't. I don't. I, 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 <laughs> I wanted to lie. I wouldn't have been able to keep a straight face because I do not trust in Oli like the way others do. But um, but look, this year, look, like I said, it's Chelsea's league to lose. They should win the league. I don't think they will. I'm just throwing it out there. They should win the league. I don't think they will. Who do you I, think is going to stop us? Gonna... That's what I'm trying to tell him. Who's going to stop us, bro, right now? Who? Listen, Who I think it's not, it's, it's, it's not so much that somebody else is going to stop you. I think it's more that you guys might get in your own way. I can see you guys having having some stinkers. Uh, and, and I'm just saying that. That's just like what I think is going to happen. I don't think this is going to happen. Bro, there's no more stinkers. My team is well, my team is well drilled. I've seen three games. The first game, crazy game. The second game against Arsenal, we should Four have gave them that seven. They're lucky. The game mm -hmm. against Liverpool, we should have won the game in the first half. That red, that red card changed the game. Well completely. done, well done, well done. It gave them, it gave them a point to take home because they shouldn't. Yeah, but that's all it takes. Home. But hold on, but but remember, that's all it takes in a game of football. It only takes a red card or a bad refereeing decision. That's all it takes. Facts. And it's I tell you that there's, right there's now, thirty-four games to play. Get ready for some for but some stinkers, mate. But, uh, honestly. But, but Apple, listen to this. So far, from what you've seen from Chelsea, look, off the back of a Champions League win, we're Super Cup winners. Four games played, zero goals conceded in open play. Only one was a penalty. Mm -hmm. That's a record mm -hmm. to talk about, bro. And look at the teams that we played. Uh, well, um, who was our first game again? Well, our first game, Palace, that smoked up. Palace, yeah, the 3 0, we smoked him. Then it was, then it was Arsenal, we smoked him. I'm not going to brag too much about that one. Then it was the Liverpool situation. 45 minutes, 10 men. Well. You see what I'm saying? We got a point from that. And now this, 3-0. You're asking, three me, nil. You're asking me to put on a cute little dress and hold pom-poms and scream Chelsea the best and it's not going to happen. No, no, no. no, no this is, we're I don't know. We're, we're not this. saying that. Yeah, we're, we're, not we're, not Chelsea. Saying, we're, just we're just saying, if you... The insecurity think, comes from Roma. It's no, crazy. No, 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 the no, insecurities no, 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 come no, from Roma. It's crazy. What I'm saying is this. Bro, if you men think they're gonna win silverware with that boy friend, <laughs> even Matic in that midfield, all right, cool, say no more. And the midfield, unfortunately for you, unless you pay a hundred million for Declan Rice, the midfielder that you want, Chua Many, is coming to Chelsea, my friend. It's not looking good for you. Because you know if we sign for, you know if we sign him in January. The amount of depth that we have is going to be stupid. We're going to have depth for well, that, every position. That, that would change things. That would change things a bit. But I still think there's, there's players in your squad that that, that, that don't cut it for me. Kovacic. Which, which players? Say names. He said Kovacic. Did you just say Kovacic? Oh! Did, did you just say? Did you see Kovacic? his performance yesterday? No way. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Did you just say Kovacic, bro? He did. Wait, yeah. hold on. Wait there for me. One second. Hold on. Hold on. Listen, wait. I've got something for you. Hold on. Wait there. That's disrespectful, man. I ain't gonna lie. That's mad disrespectful. <clears throat> so I've got it out, lads. I've got it out. And you guys are biting on absolutely everything. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you, you guys are not good at this. You're not good at this. You're not good at this. Listen, you guys are not used to being in these kind of positions, and that's fine, not for some time. Listen, what? Whoa, that's man, we're not used what? to what? Apple, last season. Hey, 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 <laughs> One second, one second, one second. Last season, we lost to Leicester. This Man, they were drawing. This is too easy. Blood. This is too easy. This is no, too easy. You lot are moving like Arsenal fans. You lot are moving like Arsenal fans. This is too easy. All right, listen. We've gone. Listen, we've gone past the half an hour point on the video, yeah. But we've got. I've got all three of you. I've got well, all three of you, including myself. But I've got two of you here. Let me let me wrap this up. We're gonna make this one video. If we want to, we can go ahead and make a second one and we can talk about our favourites for the Prem and we can continue the shit housery and the shit stirring all we want. But let me just put this one to a wrap. So, ladies, gents, whatever gender you claim yourself to be, like, share, subscribe, <laughs> all of that good stuff. You get me? Bless, 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 bless.